Thanks, Scott. And I would like to thank the organizers um, of the conference um, for being invited to talk about two really great subjects, and that is the Book of Mormon and um, DNA, which, when you look at its structure and its design, is, is no less um, of a divine-inspired um, molecule. I haven't even told a joke yet. Um, we live in a very exciting age. Um, now, by the time you finish watching CNN, you may not think that. But there is a lot of good that's um, going on in the world today. And actually, we call, so this is sort of a public service announcement on, on, on DNA. But um, you'll often hear the word genome. And genome refers to the entire complement of genes that each one of us has. And for humans, that's between 30 to 80,000 um, genes. And this is really going to be the basis of an economic revolution in countries that will um, take note. In fact, Bill Gates has said that if he had the opportunity to do it over again, he would be in biotechnology. Because with um, the early days of this type of research was pre-1995, they call the ancient days. And now since we've actually looked at and deciphered the entire human genome, um, there are many things that we think we can now do. We can use DNA as a biosensor to um, detect, we're thinking, all types of diseases, um, cancers that now we treat um, after their clinical man manifestations, long before there are clinical manifestations. So um, we really stand on a cusp and a threshold of a revolution, much like the antibiotic revolution of the last of the last century. So um, they are um, exciting times. In fact, if you work in biotechnology and DNA, everybody's really excited to get to work um, to see the progress that's, that's going to move forward. Whoops. And all this is really because of this molecule, DNA. And DNA is really quite amazing because it just has four simple letters to convey its message. There's a G, a A, and a T, and a C. And with these four letters, everything about the human body is written in what we call the blueprints of life. Now that's pretty amazing because, of course, we have to use 26 letters um, to speak. But all of the information content held within the human body and really responsible for the variation we see in this room when we look around us, um, is written in that simple genetic um, alphabet. Now, as we have deciphered the human genome, there's been quite a few surprises um, along the way. If you notice, there's all types of genes that we have that we've found. There's the reality-based TV fixation, delusions of stock market savvy, and one I'm actually convinced is that fixation in my family, and fixation means that everybody has the gene, you can't escape. And this is just late breaking news, but I think right here there's a Walmart gene. Um, and this was affirmed by Businessweek about a year ago who said that 80% of Americans made at least one visit to Walmart in that, in that particular year. And, and it's also, it also comes in handy because remember we used to, was it, what was it, in the 70s we used to blame our environment and then we used to blame our parents for things that we didn't do, that we should do, and now you can blame your genome. So this, is, this really comes in handy. It's no longer my parents made me do it, but my genes made me do it. Kind of like it's not your fault that mom married your dad. But along with this um, comes other challenges as well, and that is that there are DNA claims against the Book of Mormon. And most of these are based on modern population data. Um, number one, the genetic evidence of Native American characterizations does not support an ancient Near Eastern descent for Native Americans. Population genetics are consistent with Asian origins for Aboriginal groups. And I don't know if we should really 
be too concerned about this. Um, it all lies in your expectation. And this is mostly based on mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosome because in each one of us there's actually a paternal name that's written in your Y chromosome that you get exclusively from your dad and in the mitochondrial genome that you get exclusively from your mother. So these actually turn out to be fairly great genealogical tools that is if you're just thinking in terms of a couple of, of generations. The more generations you receive the more difficult it gets and, um, and I'll show you why. So let's look at the claims behind this and to do that we have to look at just a few basics to begin with and that is um, there are two great archives of DNA in the human body or in the cell. There's this master library that is held in the nucleus and this has billions of letters of information. If you take the information that you got from mom and you got from dad, there's 6.6 .6 billion pieces of information. And the more we learn about this, I think the more astounded we are. We used to think that there were just genes and then long islands of nothing. But in recently, within the last year, one of the big, um, probably heard the word microarrays, a group that makes microarrays has done a lot of research and found out that these islands of nothing may not be nothing, but they are important for coding, they're important for turning genes on and off. And then we have out here what I like to term branch libraries. Out away from the central nucleus are these mitochondria. And mitochondria are very important. I think when most of us went to school, if you paid attention to biology class, they just said, ah, oh, it's just the battery. It powers the cell and, and don't worry about it. Um, however, that is, um, that's changing quickly. Now for the mitochondrial aspect, it's interesting because it has its own complement of DNA, but it's extremely modest in comparison to its nuclear cell mate. It only has 17,000 pieces of information. But these branch libraries are numerous. There's thousands, maybe 10,000 in a particular cell. I have to look at my notes to see if I'm not getting sidetracked. Um, And so important is this molecule that the nucleus actually pays a tithing of 10% of its total complement to speak to the mitochondria. So these two speak back and forth and they're in communication um, actually in just microseconds, nanoseconds. And that'll become apparent as to why that, that's so important. So just for a rough comparison here, um, nuclear DNA, of course, sits in the nucleus. And it's the equivalent of about 50 sets of encyclopedias, so a lot of information. Mitochondrial DNA resides out of way, but it's still in communication. There are still phone lines, still email going back and forth in a chemical sense. That's about 10 pages of information. But these 10 pages of information are the same in every mitochondria that's, that's in the cell. And so there's a certain number of volumes here that's important to make sure that mitochondria um, work 